Hello everybody, I'm Maximilian von Schirschnitz, this is Ludwig Peukert. Today we're going to talk about the topic of Bluetooth pairing, more generally about pairing methods and pairing security overall, and more specifically how we found a design flaw in one of the most common of these protocols, which is Bluetooth. Before we start, maybe a little primer on why we engaged with this topic, a little bit of motivational background. Well, we simply saw that a lot of devices these days are going in the direction of being specialized devices, being ad hoc in some sense. And these devices are, for instance, your smartphone, your wearable, the smart home device you have at home, the payment terminal you just bought your coffee with. And we can just not simply assume that these devices are just from one single vendor, instead they are produced by various manufacturers. And we can also not assume that those are bound to a strict ownership or a strict circumstance. Instead, we need to assume that this is a very modular system we need to support. And it means that approaches like PKI we usually use just don't apply here. Of course, there's a solution to that. Everybody has seen it here, everybody in the world probably has used it once in a while. It's, it's Bluetooth, as already the title of this work suggests, um, is basically the go-to solution if you want to connect some ad hoc devices in a secure manner. So it, why is that? Simply because Bluetooth is very simple to use, I would say. Everybody of you, as I said, seen it. You have a simple list on your smartphone, maybe. You scan and then you see the other device. You click on it. A dialog appears, maybe also on the other device. You complete some steps and then you are securely paired and these devices can now securely communicate with each other. So that is great, right? That's a perfect solution, isn't it? So let's talk about Bluetooth in more detail as it is such an important technology. So first of all, it is a industry defined standard, namely by the Bluetooth Special Interest Group. Apart from that, there are many, many devices out there using this protocol. For instance, in 2019, the SIG expected over 4 billion devices to be shipped. And one reason for this large number is that the standard supports many different device classes. However, there's also a downside to all of these points. So industry defined also means that the standard is written by vendors and all of them have their own interest. Apart from that, many devices also means that the protocol is used by many security sensitive systems and so it is a common denominator for all of them. And lastly, when we have a multitude of different device classes, this also means we have, in the case of Bluetooth, a very complex and convoluted design to support all of them. So, but why is this? Why is this so complex and convoluted? And to describe this, we have to take a step back and look again at the different devices we've seen previously. So, as you can see there, obviously they have different capabilities to interact with each other and their outer world, but also it's clear that they all have their own security needs. So, and in order to solve this problem, protocols like Bluetooth start their pairing process with a process called interface negotiation. And in this first step, devices exchange their capabilities and security needs, and then they use a table like this one and then they look up which pairing method to use afterwards. So let's take a look at two concrete examples. Here we have on the left side a fitness tracker which has capability to output over a display and has a limited capability to also get some input over its small touch screen. On the right side we have a very different device, a banking terminal which is obviously more security sensitive, but it has only a small and limited display. But on the other side, we have an input capability over a keyboard, which supports digital input. So, and the interface negotiation can now be used to fit the optimal pairing method for all of these devices. So having said all of this, there's a big problem here. 
Interface negotiation is not secured. It can't be at this point because there's no secure communication yet. And actually that means that protocols like Bluetooth cannot assure that both sides are really concluding and performing the same pairing method. And that means that an attacker can provoke such a scenario where he meddles with the material and which is exchanged and therefore concludes both devices on completely different pairing methods. This is exactly what we call a method confusion. And having this in mind this, that this is a possibility that this can occur, the next thing looks a little bit shady because it's a fact that Bluetooth relies or Bluetooth pairing methods rely um, on certain assumptions which they make about the data they exchange dependent on the pairing method they have selected or they have concluded upon. And that essentially means, now taking back method confusion, that an attacker can potentially break those assumptions because those assumptions are based on what a device thinks the other device has concluded upon. And method confusion shows that this cannot be trusted and these assumptions are therefore violated. So let's look at a practical example of that. And for that purpose, we will look into two um, pairing methods of Bluetooth and their assumptions. So first, there is numeric comparison. Numeric comparison, I will just keep it abstract here, works basically like that. Um, two devices, both devices are generating uh, public-private key pairs and some nonces and ex are exchanging them. So then to derive some key from this public key material, we need to, of course, authenticate it. And this works in this case by both devices now generating a hash value, which is in the shape of a six digit decimal value of this key material they received and they have and displaying it on their screens. And probably you have seen this before, you as a user are now expected to confirm that these values are the same. And by doing so, you confirm that the hash values are the same and that most likely the material exchanged is also equivalent. Well, okay, what assumptions are made here? First, the material is confirmed because the user properly compares those values. There have been studies on how well users do this and this is not our topic here. Um, secondly, we assume that the material is exchanged un to, and received by the user unmodified, fine. So those assumptions now, let's take them aside, it's not interesting before we look at our second pairing method. And that is passkey entry. Passkey entry works a little bit different because in passkey entry, we are basically first looking at one device, which is generating a value, random value, six digit decimal value again. And then the user is expected to transfer this value from the screen of one device to the other device. And by that, you, you as a user, you create a common shared secret between those devices. So, that means now a method, a PAIC method can be performed. Basically using this common shared secret to establish a long-term key between those devices in a secure manner. And it's a kind of serial knowledge exchange. And this can only work securely if the six digit key is a common shared secret between those devices and doesn't leak to an attacker until the pairing is completed. Otherwise the attacker could just participate in that PAIC method. So the assumption here is clearly passkey entry needs to, the value needs to stay completely confidential until the pairing has ended. So good, we have those methods, but let me throw in two observations here too. Numeric comparison values are not confidential because the data they use to calculate the hashes is completely um, publicly exchanged. So those are not confidential. And secondly, passkey entry method values and numeric comparison value methods and uh, method values are completely compatible and indistinguishable to each other. They work with each other, both six digit decimal values. So that means those methods can work with each other and interact with each other without noticing that the other device is actually doing something completely different and there's a method confusion. And at the same time, this means there can be a situation where a passkey entry method is fed with numeric comparison values, which are not confidential and therefore violating the assumptions of passkey entry. 
Of course this is not fine. And so let me show you now how we exploited the method confusion. As the interface negotiation is not secured, an attacker is able to force two devices into different pairing methods. So as in the example shown in this slide, the attacker performs a pairing via passkey entry on the left side with device A. This leads to the situation where device A prompts the user to input a six digital value. On the right side, the attacker performs a pairing via numeric comparison with device B, where device B calculates the fingerprint and also displays it as a six digital value again. The user now transfers this value, this fingerprint, and puts it into the device A, where it is expected to be a passkey which was kept confidential. The attacker, however, has gained knowledge over this value through the pairing um, by an American comparison with device B. And so he is now able to perform the zero knowledge, zero knowledge key exchange with device A and conclude to a fully active man in the middle position where he has exchanged a communication key with A and B separately. So let us view the previous video again but now with a third view, namely the attacker view executing the method confusion attack. Note, however, that this is a conceptional error, here specifically occurring on the Bluetooth protocol. However, this may also exist in other protocols using multiple pairing methods. And this is because it is hard to secure the interface negotiation, which obviously has to happen before a secure communication channel has been established. But how big of a threat is this attack? So we think even though it is not the duty of the user who is meant to confirm the pairing or transfer a passkey, there is a slight possibility for her to spot such an attack. And you should also ask yourself, were you able to spot the attack in the previous video? So to dig deeper into this question, we have conducted a survey where we have looked at the different designs of different vendors and their dialogues. And there we conclude that dialogues are so different between vendors that the user is not able to correctly say which pairing method is used with this device. Apart from that, we also conducted a user study where we asked the users to conduct pairings and in the background we were running the method confusion. And in the end, it turned out nobody of them was able to spot the attack. But how could we fix the method confusion? So at the point of now, there is only a temporary fix available, namely to give the user clear warnings that this attack exists and to clearly indicate which pairing method is used right now. However, this only can be seen as a temporary fix and we are definitely in the need of a conceptual fix in the future. This is also what we are working right now on. So in conclusion, Bluetooth is insecure right now. And this is a real problem because currently there's just this tremendous growth of ad hoc specialized devices. And no other protocols really seem to fill this gap as this conceptual design flaw is a general underlying problem. So what we are currently working on is first some platforms, some tools to analyze such protocols to find such flaws, to see how many devices are affected and what other problems could exist. And uh, concurrently, more importantly, we are developing a protocol which is not just wholesome, that means it contains a lot of pairing protocols, but also formally verifiable to exclude them from the whole design. So if you're interested in those efforts you have, or if you have general ideas or questions to our work, please reach out to us. Our emails are on the slides 
and on the paper. And um, if you're in the audience right now, this is the time for your questions.